Welcome everybody, thank you for tuning in today. We have done several knee pad review videos in the past, but today we're gonna be focusing on the more minimalist, lightweight, trail-oriented knee pads. Now I would say it would kind of be like the 90, 100 millimeter crowd to maybe a 140 crowd, yeah, right? Like a daily driver 140 max bike. Okay. Or like maybe like the astute shredder who maybe like wants that minimalist lifestyle. Some of these do hold up for that. Okay. Well, um, we're gonna spare you guys the long list of marketing details and all that. You can go to the website. We'll put links below. You can read all the materials and all that stuff. So we're gonna kind of keep it a little more conversational and talk yep. about the pads, what we like, what we don't like, fit, feel, sort of uh, kind of get yeah. into the nitty gritty of it right off the bat. So here we Nick, go. lead it off. What do you think, Cali? Yeah, we'll start with the Cali. So the Cali Strike, uh, man, what a good pad. Okay. They came out this year. Uh, this is a lighter weight, but bigger coverage. It goes down below your knee to the upper shin covers a little more area. It's quite a bit of pad and it has side knee support. So pretty good coverage, I wanna say. Price? These are $85. Okay. So a little expensive, but you also have a strap that tightens around the thigh and it has some grippies up at the top. So it doesn't really move around once you get it locked in. Fit, feel, how about the material? Like, I mean, what, what yeah. are we talking here? I mean, th so this is like a, I want to say like a spandex-ish style uh, body with mesh in the back. Pretty comfy to pedal in, binds a little bit in the back of the knee because there's no cutout. Okay. But other than that, it's a really good burlier pad out of these. I would say if you're pushing the limit on one of these pedal friendly pads, this is probably your choice mm -hmm. as it covers just a little lower in the shin and it does have nice side of the knee support plus these big pads here on the like condyle support on the side of your knee. Okay. So pretty comfy. As far as the kneecap goes, right? A lot of these are more on the soft pad spectrum. This is like, it's a bit firmer. Yeah, it it is. is a harder like plasticky rubberized mm -hmm. kind of what, what pull the notes out what do we got what is this what do they call that viscoelastic that's the word i was thinking of i know that yeah, word you knew i've it. written it a million times <laughs> but um so it's it's definitely firm and it almost had me a little worried when i started wearing yeah. that like it might you know if you hit a rock is it going to translate mm -hmm. a lot of energy like sharp ridged energy to the kneecap but uh that hasn't been the case no. actually i've definitely gone down done some drop tests and uh there's some nice padding on the back side of these pads yeah. that i think will offer some good protection and like you said be kind of more for the slightly ag more aggressive side of the spectrum and this foam padding on the back side is is definitely key to making these more comfortable yeah they're really a comfortable pad to wear except if you're putting long miles in and this bunches in the back of your knee okay so i would say like you said, that more astute shredder on the 140 bike, this might be their pick. Okay. And three-year warranty on a set of pads. That's pretty cool. That Yeah, I mean, you fall and tear one of these off, you send it back, they send you a new kit. Okay. Pretty, All right. pretty cool. Well, let's move on to the next one. What do you think? We'll go with the, uh, the you Fox start with the Enduros. Fox. Yeah. Okay, now these are probably going to be my pick for the more aggressive, yeah. um, hard-charging rider. Some of the guys, you know, like those 130, 140 mm -hmm. bikes that like to push it hard. Fox calls this the Enduro Pad. Um, I, I sort of think that they kind of misnamed it. It's a pretty thin pad. It's flat, which I thought was going to be a yeah. real issue. I was like, there's no way this thing's going to fit good because of how flat it is. But it's actually cut, as you can hopefully see here. The pad itself is cut quite aggressively at the top and bottom which allows the pad to really conform around the knee nicely. Um, it's D3O, which is one of our favorite protective materials and compounds. It, mm -hmm. it does a really good job. It's super pliable. It's, very, it's a lot softer than some of these pads. Definitely is. Um, also, what I really like is it has pretty long coverage down the shin, similar to the Cali, but it's got very long knee sleeves. Um, mm. So it comes up the thigh quite a bit higher, so they stay up very nicely. Downside, I would say maybe for me, is that they're probably a little bit warmer than something like the Liats mm -hmm. here or the G-Forms. You know, this D3O padding is cut out, like there's a lot of perforations in there for airflow, but um, 
I still think it's a little bit on the warmer side just because of the, just the massive amount of coverage yeah. here. Nice mesh in the back, super comfy again. Um, no silicone grippers on the bottom, which if that's a big deal for you, might be something to note. Uh, they got a, a silicone gripper strip on the top, helps keep it in place. But this is a pad I've had for over a year and I yeah. have a closet full of pads and these still get used, so. I like how they put this kind of uh, Kevlar, Kevlar yeah. area in the front so it doesn't catch like some of these open pads do yes. quite as much. Yep. So maybe a bonus point for that. Definitely. Yeah, and at $60, a, a, a pretty solid value. Yeah, so. but no side support really on the side of your knee. No, they do wrap pretty well. But they but do, yes, I mean, they're no wide. dedicated side padding. So they do wrap around. Yeah. All right. Okay, go with go with the uh, the Liat. So here. the Liat Airflex Pro, man, I've this is my pad I wear every day, and I've worn these for three years, so I may be a little biased. <laughs> Not those. You've you've worn through. A I've couple worn through. I think I've done four sets in three years. Liat Airflex Pro, ninety dollars. So this is at the very top of the range of pedalable knee pads. But man, this thing is sweet. This is my choice of everyday riding pad. Uh, we'll go through the highlights. It's got a impact CE rated viscoelastic armor surrounded by EVA foam on both sides of the knee and the top of the knee. And that saved me a few times. I am a big fan of that. Plus it's got the newer version of it has foam on the back of the knee as well and big cutouts for the back of your knee while you're pedaling. This air mesh coupled with the, uh, vest the elastic body is super breathable not i mean you could wear it in the hottest weather and this is yeah you pedal all day in it no problem i really like this knee pad as it offers just enough protection that you're you can trust it in almost all trail conditions not something i'd wear to whistler or anything like that <laughs> but but man what a great daily wear and something i usually just keep on all day when i'm on the bike so uh, downside downsides the don't stay up as good as some of the ones that have a longer cuff on them. You can see the cuff is pretty short from pad to thigh. Mm -hmm. So you do have them ride down a little if you don't have, you're not wearing like a bib where they can really grab onto. How about lifespan? Think? I don't, I think that they, you're right. They don't last that long. I don't, I, and I think that when you crash or hook them yeah. or anything, once, once they start to deteriorate, they go like fast. They, yeah pretty quickly start fading and I, I think granted that was with some of the older ones we haven't had any durability or lifespan issues with no. the new and these one. ones i've been riding for three months and they're in pretty good shape they I, really are. i haven't fallen hard on these right but the other ones every time i did fall i had to get new yeah. set and the, this mesh on flat pedals if you caught a pin oh, geez, hiking dude, it just it tears just, it up they'd fall apart yeah um but the uh, flip side is that you get great breathability and ventilation so yeah i would say Lifespan is kind of a, mm -hmm. a critique and also the, this upper cuff, I think maybe if they had just a little bit taller yeah. of like this upper elastic bit with um, a little bit more larger of a silicone gripper. I don't like when silicone grippers are too big because then they can yeah. actually cause a lot of irritation. But um, I think that just, that little it's not, hem it's it not needs enough. to be a little bit bigger uh, the, or come a little taller. The gripper on the back of the knee does help quite a bit to keep these up but this yeah. the thigh does start to come down and just like meet the pad yeah and there is also uh a silicone gripper ring i guess you yeah could call around it, the back of the on knee on the back side of the knee pad so um that's a pretty cool little bit for just helping keep the pad in place pedaling and also in the event of a crash um and you can see there's definitely kind of a softer almost like a terry cloth kind of a feel but those silicone grippers around the knee really do a good job of keeping that thing in place mm -hmm. over the kneecap. So I've taken quite a few falls and I've got to say the protection level is pretty dialed on these, but yes, you yeah. do yeah. have to replace them. Yeah. All right. Um, and at the price, that's a, a little bit of a bummer. Yeah. But sick pad all around. I really like it. Okay. Next. Talk about these things, Nick. Oh, so the TLD knee sleeve. Speed, uh, speed sleeve. Sp speed sleeve, sorry. This is a D3O pad with almost like a sock around it. <laughs> yeah. This material yeah. is not quite as technical or comfortable as the rest of these, but TLD does say that it's one of their highest selling items. So yeah. obviously people like these. They have a nice thick 
a silicone gripper on the top and the it's really soft it's like the thinnest d3o i've ever worn it is very thin so it does a uh, very thin layer yeah it does conform to your knee really nicely yeah and it's I, I mean i think the comfort on these from like just a putting them on perspective is pretty high because it like I kind of liken it to like the old trusty pair of sweatpants. Yeah. Like it, it does, <laughs> yeah. it feels like a sock or a pair of sweats. Like you put it on and it just, you said it, like it feels more like a thick knee warmer yeah. than a knee pad. And um, I, I think for some people, mm -hmm. if you really don't need a lot of padding, you just want like that little bit of mental confidence of like, if I do hit the deck, at least I've got something between yeah. my knee and the ground this will do it. And but, like on colder days, it is totally. nice to have these on. Yes, but it is, it is warm. It's really warm. I don't, I wouldn't want to wear this on a hot day. Okay. Cause it's, you get quite sweaty. Okay. But they are fairly affordable at $54. So. Sure. But at, at roughly the same price, you can get into the Jeep warms which, and the brand new pro X threes. Yeah. Which. They've done a lot of new updates to this that really changed my mind on the G-Form pad. Okay. What what are those updates? So They still look the same. They still look exactly <laughs> the same, and they used a similar sleeve, okay. but they changed the grip to an upper and lower silicone grip now. Yep. And they padded the back of the pad with a EVA foam, mm -hmm. and that made this wearable for me. Because okay. before my knee would rub on this, even though it is somewhat pre-curved, my knee would rub on the back of this on long pedals and I just couldn't keep them on. Okay. So now this new foam on the back of the pad is soft enough that it doesn't bug me. Yeah, and it, it is stitched in there pretty well that you can actually feel sort of like a nice foam kind of barrier between that and that armor gel up front. Yeah. G-Form stuff does do a really good job of absorbing impacts it does. and, and kind of handling and reducing trauma that's, that's transmitted to the body. So that is cool. And although that technology is really awesome at its intended purpose, mm -hmm. the looks have always been polarizing for me. Yeah. Um, a lot of the newer G-Form pads that they've gotten into, they've started kind of covering this alien pad <laughs> that I call it. Um, <laughs> And, and it does make it look quite a bit better. The E-lines are some of our favorite That's pads pad. that are great, but obviously a lot hotter, a lot mm -hmm. more protective, bulkier. Um, but if you take the looks out of it, the protection offered, the comfort, the breathability is definitely pretty high on this. I would yeah. put it probably in, in a similar class with the Liat, but these do feel pretty delicate too. Like this, you know, this knee sleeve I is very thin. Fell on the X2 and ripped the sleeve out of the pad, similar to what happened with the Liat. So right. uh, one crash kind of situation, one hard crash situation. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, obviously we've crashed in these and not torn them yes. as well. Yeah, yeah. But uh, if you do it just right and you rip that sleeve out, I guess the trade off, right, with anything is. The lighter you want something, yeah. the, it, there's going to be compromises and the compromises on the lightest, thinnest pads are, they're not going to be the most durable mm -hmm. when it comes time to crash repeatedly. But right? it's something I can keep on all the time, Yeah, which is huge for me. And they're not that expensive. They're, yeah, at uh, 50 bucks, you're, again, pretty cheap. Way cheaper than stitches. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Um, I guess we kind of figured out you like those Liat's the best. Liat's I'm... my choice for sure. Okay. How about you? Um, you know, I think I, I personally, I always have a hard time picking <laughs> just one because there's so many different applications and I think there's so many different types of riders out there. Yeah. Um, I, I really think that the Liat is a solid option. Mm -hmm. I definitely like wearing those quite a bit. The G forms I absolutely would trust. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, if, if, you want something that's really thin, super comfy, light, pretty breathable. The G-Forms are solid. Um, but I would say, you know, there's a reason that I've held on to these yeah. in my gear bag for as long as I have. And I think that's probably, you know, because I would probably put myself at the 140 plus end of the riding spectrum. So most of my riding is on more aggressive yeah. terrain um, at like, you know, a little bit higher speeds for mm -hmm. myself, a little bit rockier, chunkier stuff. Whereas like if I was going to go out on a trail bike, right? Like I'm going to take out this Epic Evo. 
G form or Liat's all day. Yeah. The Cali's are great. For me, they weren't as comfy. They're not, they don't have quite as much comfort as yeah. some of these super thin and yeah. lightweight ones. Yeah. So I think the, the Cali it just, it was a little bit hard for me. I could feel mm -hmm. that hardness a little bit more through the knee pad. Um, I think if the pre-cut on these doesn't quite fit your knee the right way, yeah. it's not going to be that yeah. comfortable. Yeah. So I would say if you, if, if you're a rider that really doesn't get super gnarly, you want that insurance policy, G, G Form and Liat mm. are going to be absolute ways to oh, go. Yeah. If you're someone that is potentially going to be hitting the deck a little bit, you still want a lighter knee pad. The Fox Enduro followed by the Cali. And then yeah. the TLD, I guess, I mean, they sell tons of them. So there are people out there that really like them. Yeah. They're not something that I would personally ride. It's not for me. Um, you just, you, there's not enough protection for the heat sacrificed, mm. in my opinion. Um, I mean, maybe if I live like in Arizona where it's chilly all winter and I do want to ride all winter yeah. and have at least some knee but pad it's on. it's so rocky there. Why You're right. You're going to need a gnarlier pad. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Um, yeah. Not, not to totally put that thing down. It just isn't the right application for us. It mm -hmm. might be for you. So um, give it a look if you want something that's a, a good knee warmer, uh, something that's comfortable around the leg, feels kind of like an old pair of sweats or, you know, some super comfy super socks comfy. <laughs> and has a very thin layer, right? It's not going to get in your yeah. way. So um, I think those are the picks for us, guys. So if yeah. you are looking for a lightweight trail pad, make sure you check these options out. These are all pads that we've tested, ridden, and like quite a bit. Obviously, there are some we like more than others. And there are some pads that we didn't bring out today because, frankly, we didn't really think they were worth recommending. These are all pads we believe in and think are worthwhile. So thank you for watching. We hope to see you out on the trails. Be sure to ask any questions down below and we'll do our best to get back to you. Thanks.